the Pine Barrens were formed over the last 5,000 years in unique geologic conditions because of the sand that's here, the dryness that that, that brings with it. Probably having water surrounding the island has something to do with it. I mean, there's all kinds of wetlands mixed into where the Pine Barrens are. But we're going to focus on the, uh, the Pine Barrens themselves. Uh, being that it's really sandy, dry soil, it uh, it's only conducive to certain types of life because the soil is drier, especially the plant life. And of course, plant life eventually determines animal life. But there's mostly pines there. It makes perfect sense. It's called the pine barren. So it's mostly pine trees. I mean, there are low growing oak trees that are fairly unique there, too. They used to call them the oak, oak scrub areas, which is a little different than the pine barren areas. Uh, so there's lots of different kinds of plants. Now, it seems like almost like a desert by the eye. If you look at the pine barrens, it's just like a bunch of sand and a bunch of pine trees. And it turns out that it might be one of the most diverse ecosystems on Long Island, even when, though it's seemingly a desert. Uh, and it has a lot of the normal life you might see on Long Island, deer and foxes and some of the bird life we see other places, raccoons. It has some of the similar life, but it also has a lot of unique life. Something called the buck moth only lives in the pine barrens. Uh, tiger salamanders are found just almost exclusively in pine barren areas now on Long Island. Um, Trying to think of mud turtles. Some of those animals are only found in the pine barrens. And there's another reason for it, on top of the fact that it's such a unique habitat. The other reason is because it's disappeared. A lot of it is gone. We used to have, I think it's 250,000 acres uh, of uh, pine barrens. Now we have 10,000. If you think in your head how much has been, that is, that's 240,000 are gone. But the, there's a good part to that because it forced um, a fight between the, the environmentalists and the, and the developers to save this place. And the environmentalists fortunately won. They had to compromise a bit, but they won. And now that 10,000 acres is protected under the Pine Barrens Act. It's, it's a state act. Uh, so it's a lot better protected than it used to be. So that's the good side. Now there are some other things that are unique to Pine Barrens and the fact that uh, they're, they're often controlled by fire. It's a natural occurrence in a Pine Barren area. I don't mean somebody lighting a match and causing a fire should be happening in the Pine Barrens, but fires happen naturally because it's so dry. And that leads to something really interesting. The plants there have become adapted to fire. The pitch pines, the most common small pine trees that are there, they actually have cones that have um, a covering over them that only burns away when there's a protection during a fire, but burns away and the seeds only, the cones only open up when there's a fire. Why is this necessary? Because the fire could destroy everything. It could, it could keep the regular cones from opening that are there normally. It could ruin all the live trees. So. The adaptation, or the way the tree changed for this, was to have cones that open only in fire. So that the whole thing could regenerate again and start all over. It's an amazing thing. That's the thing I find most amazing about pine barrens, that it's a habitat that has to have fire. And you know, human beings tend to want to control fire, and especially in a place like Long Island, where there's people living amongst this or nearby. But they have to come to some kind of compromise, because a place like the pine barrens could disappear if we control the fires. It won't go through its natural processes. So that's really important um, for it to regenerate and come back to the way it used to be so all the wildlife can survive there again. So that pretty much covers the pine barrens.